Welcome to Genesis Models. I'm Bill Boudreau and I hope you're doing well today. I've got a kit review for you. It's Edward's newly released Mitsubishi Zero, the Tora 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 limited edition kit. Now it just came out and it right now it's one of the hottest kits on the market so I thought maybe we'd get a good look at it here. Let's start off with the box art. It is a dual combo kit, so yes, you do get two airframes in this particular box. And we're talking about uh, a 48th scale kit here. Kit number 11155. And right here on the side of the box, you can see eight of the 12 markings that are marking options that are within this kit. And if you kind of flip this one over, um, you get to see the other four that, that are also included. Uh, nothing too much. Um, Nothing too much on the other couple sides of the box, so how about we jump in here and take a quick look at the plastic. Alright, so I've already got all of the plastic out of the packaging, and with it being a dual combo kit, you get two runners of, the, of each one, so we just set one half aside and we'll take a look at one. And let's start it off here with this particular screw that, that gets us the, a good look at the airframe, some cowling pieces, as well as some flight control surfaces. And let's just hone in first on that airframe. When you take a look at this, the, your first impression is like, wow, right? It's got very crisp and clean recessed panel line detail that's running all through the airframe. And when you get really even closer, you can actually see the very fine rivet, recessed rivet markings that are all over there, uh, just all the way through vertically on this airframe very consistent all the way from the top of the airframe down to the bottom of the airframe. Hopefully you can get a good glimpse of this. I mean, some of it is so fine that you might not really catch it on camera, but when you have the right lighting and, and you look at this, it's you can actually see there's just a tremendous amount of detail all across this airframe. Coming over to these cowling pieces, I mean, it's very consistent on there as well. You got very nice recessed uh, rivet markings that go along the circumference of this cowling half. Some very fine recessed panel lines that are there as well for some of those uh, air vents that open up when the engine's going. Now take a look at this. This is our rudder right here. This you actually, you know, when you look at it, it's very well detailed and it's, 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 I don't know, it's kind of like a complex. I don't know how to really describe it, but not only does it have recessed areas of it, but some of the structure is also raised as well. And so it's not really smooth. I mean, you run your finger across that and you can feel not only the recess detail of this rudder, but also the, the uh, uh, raised detail as well. So very, very cool on both sides. Very consistent with some of these other flight control surfaces. Now this is actually very smooth when you run your finger across it, but you can see all that awesome detail right there with the grid patterns of the of the recessed rivets and, and the panel lines as well. So all in all, such a good start to one of the newest kits that's on the market. Let's jump over here to this sprue, which is uh, the sprue for the wings, um, upper and lower side of the wings, as well as some other flight control surfaces. Now, I'm seeing a couple sets of ailerons here, and so there must be one set that's not used and, and another set that is used. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the detail on the underside of this wing, which is just incredibly phenomenal here. Let's see if I can get it over here. If you take a look at all of that detail that is just right there along this whole wing. It's just absolutely amazing. I mean, when you look at some of these, there we go, there's a decent angle. When you take a look at some of these lines of rivets, you can actually see that it's, it's a dual roll of rivets there. And some of those lines, the rivets are actually adjacent to each other. Whereas on some of these other rows, you can see that the rivet lines are offset from each other. So just incredible detail that goes right there. And you're looking here, we, we do have some uh, raised surface detail as well. So awesome grid pattern throughout this whole wing. 
the bottom side of the wing. You can see that in between each recess panel line there. Lots and lots of uh, riveting that's littering the bottom of this airframe, uh, of this airfoil here. Top side, similar story, right? I mean, very nice, smooth, and consistent recess panel lines all the way across. And again, the, the grid pattern for those recessed rivets is, is just phenomenal. Taking a look, and much like the rudder, when you take a look at uh, these these ailerons here, uh, similar similar texture to it, you know, a combination of both recessed detail as well as raised detail, so adds a lot of flavor to these airfoils, that's for sure. All right, coming over to our next screw, which is our engine components as well as some other uh, interior cockpit is what it looks like. Um, actually, let's turn this around. This is the way the screw layout is. This is screw delta. So let's hone in here on the cylinders because one of the things that I see here is that look at those cooling veins on each one of these cylinders. I mean, it's just amazing detail right there. All the way around on, on both sets of, of cylinders that, that you can mount with each other. Coming over here, you can actually see you know, you've got, I think these are the, uh, the valve rods that, that are on the radial engine. You get to take a look at the bulkhead for, you know, your cockpit there. It's got some nice detail on there. I think this is your cockpit floor. I believe so. I'm not sure which side is up, which side is down. And look at some of your instrument panel detail right there. I mean, very, very fine, very, very nice as well. A lot of small parts that uh, are going to be very delicate to glue on. Here is, uh, again, one of your walls of your uh, cockpit. So it's got a bunch of the different uh, control levers that you can use inside the cockpit, the pilot controls, as well as some of the instrument panels as well. So just very nice detail all the way around. I think these, I don't know what these pieces are, but really nice detail on, on there as well. Coming over here, here's a couple different, looks like a couple different instrument panels. Um, we'll have to take a look at the instructions on theirs, but one of them, I don't know if you can catch that, but one of them you can see that there are some dials right there, whereas the other one doesn't have any. And there is a photo etch fret that actually uh, is in here. And I took a quick look at it. We'll, we'll get a good look at it uh, later so we can tell why we have two different instrument panels there. Over here, we can see what our wheel well is shaping out to be. So that's the internal detail of our wheel wells. So very, very nice so far. All right, let's go to the other sprue here, this sprue. Uh, a lot of exterior features on it. Um, has our wheels, prop, fuel tank. Looks like we got a bomb here or a torpedo or something. Another other weaponry here, landing gear. Um, prop spinners. Um, so let's take a look over here. We have uh, really, these are, I think, are the, uh, the insets for the actual wheels that go inside here. So those are very nicely detailed. Prop, I mean, I would say a simplistic prop, but it's got some very nice twists to it, to each blade. And no flashing whatsoever that I can see on any, any pieces throughout any of these sprues. Um, so really nice. Let's take a look at this landing gear door. See if I can get you focused in on some of the detail. There are really fine recessed rivet details that are also on these landing gear doors. So very, very cool indeed for sure. All right, jumping over to our clear plastic here. And again, you get two of these sprues. Let me kind of zoom you in from the top here. You can take a look. Oh, wrong way. I mean, very, very clear plastic all the way around, as you can tell. Um, really nice, pa nice panel line detail that's here. In fact, I think if you really look closely, you can actually see some very nice recessed riveting that's going on in between the very fine canopy structure uh, pieces that are here. And it looks like 
you have a couple different options with maybe perhaps a uh, an open canopy and a closed canopy. We'll, we'll kind of note that during the uh, review of the instructions. But really, I don't see any blemishes whatsoever in any of these clear parts. So nonetheless, I mean, this is... That's a good sign when you know you got some very crisp, clear parts. All right, coming over here, we have our photo etch piece. We'll just take that out of the bag here and take a look at it. So as you can see, we've got color photo etch, mainly for the cockpit here. A lot of different dials and instruments that are there, and it looks like you have multiple plates. So you have an inlet plate and a framing plate that goes over it for uh, what is one of the side panels as well as the main instrument panel as well. And I think what's very interesting is that for these two uh, that actually have instruments on there, you can see, let me see if I can get you in over here, you can see that every instrument is very detailed and what is equally impressive is that each instrument has a gloss coating on it so that when you get the overlay over the underlaying piece you'll actually see that gloss coating as if it, you can you can tell that uh, you've got the glass on each one of those instruments so amazingly cool and then coming down here we've got some color photo etch for these are the seat belts right here as well as a host of other details that go throughout the aircraft. So really nice piece of photo etch, uh, a nice photo etch fret that, that comes along with the kit. Of course we have our mask. Not much to take a look at for a mask, right? But hey, I think that mask is probably going to be one of the most helpful things that's in this kit. I mean, especially if you saw that detail on those clear parts. So coming over here, let me zoom out a little bit. Um, we'll take a look here at the uh, decal sheets. Now I don't know if these decals are Edwards new decals that take a different application. I'm not very familiar with those newer decals. I've never used them so I'm not going to be able to comment as to whether or not these decals are those new decals or not. Um, but here you go. Got my camera oriented this way, so we'll just kind of take a look at it this in this manner. Uh, very nice decals. You know, it's they're not vibrant decals uh, with color. Uh, they really have kind of that faded look to them. If you can kind of tell, it's not the bright red. It's kind of a mix of red and some gray spots that just kind of makes it look like they're they're weathered a little bit already. Uh, which is which is kind of unique. It's kind of cool, actually. Uh, a whole host of different marking options on this one one uh, sheet right here. So, really, okay. So looking right here, we've got some decals that are more for your instrument panel. Let me just kind of bring in here and get a good close look. So, host of instrument panel uh, decals there. Lots of different markings. I think if you kind of look at here, I got a little glare on there, but really when you're looking at it, you can kind of see they're somewhat faded. They're not that bright red that you see on some other manufacturers. So all in all, a really nice decal sheet. We get a little one right here as well. Those are the two duplicates. Are these two duplicates? Let's take a look. Yeah, these look like two duplicates here. All right, we'll take a look at one. Some more markings right there. These are some of the smaller stencils that uh, you can see. So very, very, very thin decals. Uh, again, if you could maybe comment in the video here, do you know if these are the decals that have the new application process versus just the standard water slide de decals? Let me know. I, I can't really tell because I don't have the experience with, with those newer types of decals. All right, so we've got our instruction sheet here. It's actually more like a book. There's a lot to it, and it's printed out on some very nice glossy paper, so a really nice addition to the kit. 
Coming right into this, you get some nice historical text as to the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the preparation and getting set to sail on it, and then of course some more detail on the actual attack and how the uh, Zero became such an iconic aircraft of World War II. And this was written by Jan Bolbeck. I did a little research on him and he actually writes some of the historical context to these instruction sheets that you often find in their limited edition kits. He's also known for drawing up the angry bunny that you can often see in some of Edward's kits too. So, Moving over to the actual instructions for the kit. Typical Edward fashion, sprue layouts with the photo etch fret and the mask. A legend for the color uh, system that they use throughout the book. They use the Mr. Hobby aqueous codes, the Mr. Color line as well, and also mission model paints that you'll see referenced throughout this book. Assembly starts with the fuselage halves and some of the cockpit detail that goes on those side walls. You can see some of the photo etch too, uh, very nice color coding there as well. And you see a lot of those boxes where um, it, it has the paint call outs too. Coming over here, you start working on your flight deck with the seat and the seat going onto that bulkhead, some external details that are going on there, uh, the floor and some additional structures and features going onto the floor. Some photo etch also going on some of those controls and uh, uh, boxes as well. And then everything gets put together into a nice little cockpit assembly. Now the instrument panel here, you can see this particular step. where you, This is where you have that option for the decal that gets applied to the instrument panel. Now if you recall when we were looking at the plastic, there was a, an instrument panel that had some surface detail for the instruments molded right to it. And then we also saw a piece that had no detail whatsoever, and that's where that piece comes in, is you have that instrument panel with no detail whatsoever, and that's meant for the photo etch that goes on there. You go down here with your machine guns on those mounts, and that gets mounted onto the forward portion of that cockpit assembly. Then you start working on that airframe assembly with the rudders going on, and then the flight deck going in on the underside of the airframe assembly. Coming over here, you start working on your wings, your lower wings right here with your wheel well pieces that start to create that detail inside there. You get the top side of those airfoils coming on there as well as some external details that are going on uh, there. Here we've got some more flight control surfaces, uh, elevators and horizontal stabilizers and all of those going onto your airframe. And then you get that wing attached on the bottom side of that fuselage. So again, very simplistic assembly so far. Coming over to the engine, we've got the two radial rings there along with the valve rods that you go on as well. And that engine assembly is cruising on there. We've got some portions of the cowling that get made up and there are specific spots for where that cowling should not be glued. And then that cowling assembly goes right onto that airframe. Switching over to the underside of the aircraft, there are a lot of different small bits that, that require some assembly here from the wheel, uh, the, the wheel hubs going into the wheel assemblies. They are single piece wheels, so you don't have to mate two halves together. But then you've got the, uh, uh, the hubs that go right in there. And, of course, everything affiliated with getting those installed on the landing gears and then the wheel well doors and everything going on to that aircraft there. And, again, you know, like most of these World War II birds, you're kind of painting this whole airframe before you start installing a lot of the undercarriage on here. Coming over here, some final steps with, uh, you know, that the fuel tank right there, as well as the prop and the spinner that's going on that particular engine. Back to the top side, we've got all of the clear plastic work, uh, an option here for a closed canopy with a lot of different details there. And then coming over here, this is where they spell out the option as to where you're putting that particular piece for the open canopy. Coming over here, there's a lot of detail affiliated with where the mask pieces go onto the clear plastic. 
And if you kind of take a look back over here, you'll see the star indices, which indicate where those masks go as well. And then we get into the markings. The markings are just incredible. Again, 12 markings options for this kit. And taking a look here, you actually see that there's some historical text as well to each marking that option that you have in this particular kit. From details like who actually flew the aircraft, what unit were they in, where was their theater of war, whether it was Battle of Midway, or whether it was China, or uh, maybe even Taiwan and the Philippines as well. Now each one of these marking options comes with pretty much the same color code system. It's that green-gray-ish color. Um, I, I would say it's more brown-green than gray-green, but most of these options are the same color code with just different markings on there. And that takes care of the instruction sheet right there. All right, I would absolutely rate this kit as exceptional. I mean, when you look at, say, on those wings, all of those consistent recess panel lines that are fine throughout, the gr uh, grid rivet lines that are there, including all of that, expanding onto the fuselage assembly, and then, of course, that external detail that's on those flight control surfaces, the exterior of this aircraft is going to look just amazing. And then whether you have an open canopy or a closed canopy configuration, you know, that cockpit is going to be visible and it's got the photo etch in there that looks just absolutely gorgeous. It's got a lot of additional plastic parts that make up that whole assembly. So, you know, it's really going to look like an exceptional build when, when you're done with this airframe. Now, you know what, from a price perspective, being a dual combo kit, it retails for about 98 bucks in the U.S. I don't know what it retails for in other countries, uh, but it is a pricey kit, you know, and, that, and that's in today's world where, you know, the costs of doing business are going up. Uh, but I think overall, I mean, you get a good value here. You, you get some really good plastic. You get the photo etch fret. You get the mask that's included in there that instruction booklet with the historical text. I mean, that historical text alone is just what drives a lot of us to, to build these plastic scale models and as well as our uh, overall enthusiasm for the aviation industry. So it really is a nice package when you put everything together at the price. And who knows, you know, you can split it with a friend, right? 98 bucks, divide that by two. You give one kit to a friend if you don't want to do two. You know, you keep the other kit, it makes it worthwhile. Now, if you're holding out for the actual individual kit for this mold, um, I, I read that you're going to actually have to wait until January. I don't know if that's even delayed, but sometime in early 2022, you'll get the Profi Pack edition of the Zero for this particular mold. So, so that's coming up too. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this kit review, and I do hope that Santa Claus maybe perhaps brings you one of these. So, um, until next time, I'm Bill Boudreaux, this is Genesis Models, and I'll catch you later.